Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Patton from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Alex Justice Lee's aunt. And the book that I am going to read the first chapter from is a new series called The Forgotten Five by Lisa McMahon. The book is called Map of Flames. I currently work for Barnes & Noble in the Phoenix area and Lisa launched this book from our store last month. So we're very excited to be part of her success. She made it to number four on the New York Times bestseller list last week. So I hope that you enjoyed the book. I'm going to read the synopsis and then the first chapter, which is only two pages. So 15 years ago, eight supernatural criminals fled Estero City to make a new life in an isolated tropical hideout. Over time, seven of them disappeared without a trace, presumed captured or killed. And now the remaining one has died. Left behind to fend for themselves are the criminals' five children, Bertie, Bricks, Seven, Tenor, and Cabot, each with superpowers of their own. Then Bertie finds a map among her father's things that leads to a secret stash and a note. Go to Estero, find your mother, and give her the map. The five have lived their entire lives in isolation. What would it mean to follow the map to a strange world, full of things they had only heard about, like cell phones, cars, and electricity? And where, a world where, thanks to their parents being supernatural, is a crime. Bertie's golden, Bertie Golden's fingers were still stained from dirt from digging her father's grave. Tears smudged her cheeks. When I'm gone, he'd whispered to her, look through my crate, I've left you. His fingertips had sparked one last time and gone out, leaving them charcoal-tinged and lifeless. He labored, his labored breathing had slowed and he'd closed his eyes. Left her what? Or maybe he just, you know, left her. Dad, her chest had tightened. She squeezed his hand. Dad! A moment later, his eyes had fluttered. Find your mother, he said with a gasp. Tell her, I did my best. And then he'd died. Bertie hadn't expected him to say anything like that. Her mind had been turning the words around ever since. Through the digging, the funeral, and the burying, today's glorious sunshine hadn't penetrated the numbness, not even the call of the gray whale, only those words, find your mother. Bertie would check Dad's crate in the morning, but tonight she left their cabin and headed for the fire pit with her 10-year-old brother Bricks, who was bouncing, not joyfully, by her side, and her tiny pig trotting behind. Only the five kids remained in the hideout built by their supernatural criminal parents, forgotten and alone, and they had a lot to talk about.